Hello everyone. In this video, we will look at how to expertly apply current division principle to efficiently solve resistive circuits. Once we master this principle, it becomes possible to write the equation of the desired output currents directly without having to resort to detailed circuit analysis techniques. So let's see how this can be done. The current division principle applies to resistors connected in parallel. In such circuits, the current through any resistor is inversely proportional to the magnitude of the resistor. Consider two resistors in parallel R1 and R2 connected to an ideal independent current source IS as shown. We can redraw this given circuit using an equivalent resistor as shown. Applying Ohm's law to the equivalent resistor, we can see that voltage V is IS times the equivalent resistance. Now going back to the original circuit, we can apply Ohm's law to the resistors R1 and R2 and substitute the value of V to obtain I1 and I2 as shown. This shows that I1 is inversely proportional to R1 and I2 is inversely proportional to R2. This completes the derivation of the current division principle. The current division principle can be easily extended to any number of resistors connected in parallel. Here IS denotes the source current. In the numerator, we have the equivalent resistance, which can be calculated using the general formula shown here. In the denominator, we have the resistor through which, through which we wish to determine the current. Let us consider a simple application of current division. In this circuit, the currents of interest are I1 and Ix. In this circuit, we can see that we have four parallel branches. In this branch, we have a combination of resistors, which can be reduced to a single equivalent resistor, and then the equivalent circuit can be redrawn as shown. We can find the equivalent resistance of these four resistors in parallel as shown. Then using current division, we can find I1 and I3 as shown. To find Ix, we note that the two 8 ohm resistors are in parallel and form a current divider for the branch current I3. Since these two resistors are equal, I3 divides equally among the two resistors and we get Ix as shown. Please pause the video now if you wish to study this in more detail. This is the same circuit constructed in LTSpice. We can simulate when we bring the cursor over a resistor, we can read the current value in the bottom left corner. We can see that I1 is 4 amps, I3 is 2 amps, and Ix is 1 amp. These simulated values match the calculated values. Next, let's consider an average or standard difficulty example. In this given circuit, we can recognize a voltage divider formed by the 6 and the 12 ohm resistors connected in series. We can also recognize a current divider formed by the dependent current source and the 10 and 15 ohm resistors in parallel. 
We can redraw the current divider part of the circuit as shown where the dependent current source is pointing up. Thus we introduce a negative sign in its magnitude. We can now use voltage division to find V delta which helps us to determine the dependent current source magnitude. Then we use current division to find I1 and I2 as shown. To confirm that these values are correct, we can apply Kirchhoff current law to the top node and we can see that the KCL is satisfied. Thus the solution is correct. This is the same circuit constructed in LTSpice. When we simulate, we can see that the current I1 is minus 1.8 amps and the current I2 is minus 1.2 amps which matches the calculated values. Finally, we consider a challenging example. In this given circuit, the desired variables are V0 and I0. Analyzing this circuit using node voltage or mesh current methods may involve a lot of effort. However, using series parallel combination of resistors, Ohm's law and repeated application of current division principle, we can expertly write expressions for the output variables as shown. To help you make sense of these expressions, the intermediate steps are shown here. We can redraw the given circuit as shown. Using current division, we can find I1 and I2. Then using Ohm's law applied to the 30 Ohm resistor, we can find V0. Finally, we can see that branch current I2 forms a current divider with the 100 and the 25 ohm resistors. Thus, we can use current division a second time to find I0. Please pause the video now if you wish to study this in more detail. This is the same circuit constructed in LTSpice. When we simulate, we can see that V0 is 50.4 minus 14.4, which is 36 volts, and I0 is 360 milliamps, which matches the calculated values. To summarize, in this video, we have explored the application of current division principle. We have seen that current dividers can be formed using independent or dependent current sources or even branch currents. Finally, with experience, the current division principle can be applied repeatedly along with series parallel combination of resistors to obtain the desired currents. Thank you for watching this video and I hope that it is helpful to your learning.